Now the definitions in 1.6 can be uh, tricky. I'm not going to go through the actual written uh, out definitions. I don't think they're very illuminating. You get a lot more uh, useful uh, uh, concepts of increasing and decreasing that you just don't really get out of the definitions. So what is increasing? Increasing, we generally read uh, left to right. So our graphs naturally go to the right is positive. So your x increases as you go to the right. So when you think about graphs, all these vocabulary words are in reference to uh, thinking about going to the right. So what does increasing mean? Increasing, obviously, going up, but not just going up, it's when you go to the right, you're going to go up. So increasing is actually an arrow up to the right. Decreasing is going down, but it means when you go to the right, you're going to go downwards. So we have the down to the right arrow. Constant, not going up, not going down, staying flat, in this case flat to the right. Local maximum, what that means is there's a point in the graph such that the y value here, so if this was a comma f of a, this would be a maximum if f of a, this y value is bigger than all the y values close by. Not all the y values overall, but all the ones that are close. So if you think about making a neighborhood around here, just a little tiny circle, every y value on the graph in here is less than or equal to this y value. So we got the biggest one. Same thing, local minimum is very similar. If this is b comma f of b, what that means, this y value is the biggest, uh, smallest one for all the other points close to this point. Now why do I say close? Because we're about to look at an example that the local minimum is not the absolute minimum. So what is the absolute minimum, minimum and maximum? It means you don't just have the biggest y value close to here, you have the biggest y value for everything, every point on the graph. And the absolute minimum, you have the smallest y value for every single point on the graph. So we're going to look at this example. This is just a graph here. And we're going to look at properties. So x-intercept, y-intercept, talked about those earlier, x-intercepts negative 2, 0, and 0, 0. So negative 2, 0, and 0, 0. Our y-intercept happens to be the same point as one of the x-intercepts, 0, 0. Remember, x-intercepts, they have a y-coordinate of 0. Y-intercepts, I underlined the wrong one, have an x-coordinate of 0. So these have y-coordinates of 0. And the y-intercept has an x-coordinate of 0. Where is this decreasing? You want to be careful. It looks like it may be decreasing here, but you want to make sure you go to the right. When you go to the right, you can see decreasing happens from negative 1. Oh, I need to label some points here. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to go from 1 to 2, negative 1 to 2. At the actual endpoints of this interval, you can't really say are we increasing or decreasing here because if you look to the left, we're decreasing or uh, increasing. If you look to the right, we're decreasing. So what we do is just leave out the actual endpoints. So increasing and decreasing, these are always x intervals. And they're always going to be open. So we got decreasing right in the middle. Why do I not use y values? Well, if I said y goes between negative 2 and 1, the problem is well, that doesn't describe exactly this part of the graph because these y values can also be there. So it's not good to use y values to describe places on the graph. So we do instead, we use x values because from the one function rule, if I tell you x is negative 1, there's only one place on the graph I'm talking about. If I tell you y equals 1, am I talking about this point or this point over here? So that's why we use x values. Where's the function increasing? So to the right, we're going up here. So here's an increasing interval, and here's another increasing interval. 
So we'll start out negative 3 to negative 1. And we're going to put the u for union in between. And we're going to go from 2 to 4. You want to be careful with your notation. Notation for intervals looks just like points. And the only way to know which one you're talking about at the time is in context. I know y-intercept should be at a point. Decreasing should be an interval. So these are points here. Increasing, decreasing. These are intervals and, con well, and constant. These are all intervals. Our functions won't be constant very often. Now this function is never flat. So you could write never. If you want to write uh, mathematically in set notation, you have the empty set, which means nothing. Doesn't mean zero, it means nothing. All right, local max and local min. A local max right here, negative one comma one. And this is a point. A local mix, min is gonna be a point, as is min and max. So what is local min? So right here, we got a local, local min two, negative two. We have another local min. And it's gonna be over here, which is negative three, uh, negative one. This local min looks like a real smile. It's a regular local min. It's a point at the bottom of the valley. This local min looks like maybe it's not a local min. What happens on the left side? Well, in this graph, nothing happens on the left side. So there are no points that have a y value that's below this y value. This is the smallest y value. So when it comes to the absolute min, how do we get the absolute min? It's the smallest of the two y values, which will be two, negative two. That's, ooh, two, negative two. That's the absolute min. What about the absolute max? It's very tempting to take negative one, one, the local max, and write it in here. However, is one the absolute largest y value on this graph? Definitely not. I can get two over here, whatever y, x value corresponds to that. However, I can't actually ever hit three because this is open. Because this is open, there's no single y value that's bigger than the rest. So this has uh, no maximum.